Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at what is, a, appears to be a cheat. They didn't tell me that when they sent it to me, but what a viewer sent me of a program that for several hours I was genuinely confused as to whether this is a very invasive and ineffective form of DRM or malware. So we're going to take a look at it. I'll explain some of the analysis process and the ultimate conclusion. So, why is this process suspicious? Well, let's go over to any run and we can find out. So, this, I'm not sure if this is, okay, this is one of my, uh, we'll go, we'll go back a step. Now, this one I had modified to remove the DRM, mainly just because I wanted to see what it was and whether it was malicious. But what this program does, and this is the suspicious part, is if we look over here, we get task kill, image name, fiddler, fiddler, uh, Wireshark, HTTP debugger, HTTP debugger pro, if you got that, HTTP debugger service, uh, something to deal with proxy settings, search util, I don't even know, I, I don't know if that's to make sure that you don't have certain certificates installed, and it just goes and goes and goes. So inevitably, killing these analysis tools is suspicious, and this is why AnyRun and Triage both believe this is a malicious file. You can see malicious, drops executable, and uses task kill to kill security tools. Suspicious, fair enough. So, is this malicious? Well, certainly not in an obvious way. So I've gone through, and I've actually gone through a lot of the different functionality. So this is the piece of the code. Now, I did a lot of decompilation, and I also used... Binary Ninja has this really great start, which is called Sidekick, which can... Basically, you put in a command, and it can help you figure out the structs, rename things. It's not perfect, but it can give you a good idea of what's going on. So what we've got here is a mem copy. So this command is going to contain this XOR string. And this... This is the alternative while syntax, where... As long as i is less than the decimal value of 03a, 0x3a, uh, it will continue running. And there's some slight variations of this for every single different command, just to make the decompilation a bit trickier. And then what it does is system and command. So, oh, I should point out the and is the address, which is to do with pointers. And plus i here is, is a portion of it. This is all uh, decompiled into a... C-like syntax from the assembly. And we then we run this command, which is simply done through this. We do this for each command that we have. And that is essentially how this really weird form of DRM works. So, what network requests are we trying to cover up? Well, we can find out. This application uses a service called KeyAuth in order to do its authentication. Now, as far as I can tell, everything here looks legit. This is strange. It is weird how the key validation is encrypting the user's entered key. I, I don't really understand quite what that's doing. But it would be something that, of course, would be easy enough to bypass with a HTTP debugger. So we can understand why they wouldn't want that. And uh, I've tried both where I get policy activation and where I don't. And no, in none of these is there any indication of data exfiltration. And we can look at the DNS requests, and there's still no indication, although there is a flag on here for this domain, and that is actually because some fake cheats are using it. But it, I, I don't know if this is fake cheat, because I, I don't play the game that it's for. I, I don't even 100% know what game it is for. I think it's Rust, and I don't know how to test uh, cheats, but that's how that works. So how do we figure it out? Well, the code is insanely obfuscated. Like, figuring out anything in here is going to be tricky because uh, all of this goes in here and it's just this is a this is a nest i did i did figure out a fair amount but the easier way and how i ultimately was able to figure this out was using a tool that some of you may know because that people put the name of it in their name to stop roblox from working this is x64 dbg so let's just go over the process of testing this this is the original binary and here's how i got an idea so we go to debug with x64dbg, it's x64debugger, and we can just let the function run. And we have to do this a few times to get through the start points. And once we get past that, everything's loaded, and we get an input box. 
So type in whatever we want, doesn't matter, we're just testing. And once we hit enter, of course, because the other weird thing in this is the message box data is XORed, which is extremely uncommon in legitimate software. Uh, oh, my breakpoint is still here. Okay, okay, right, yeah. So what you would do is you'd find the point before this, which of course, because I set up breakpoint is here. And this is going to compare the response from the online activation to what I just typed. Sorry, I explained that terribly. It's going to compare the response of the online activate. It's going to send my my uh, product key to the online activation server, and then that server is going to respond. And if that server responds with a zero, we go through here. If it responds with a one, uh, we're going to we're going to hit this jump if not equal, and we will jump to the success condition, which is not it's oftentimes you jump to the failure condition, but it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on here. So this is the failure condition. What should happen? Uh, give it a second is a message box will pop. Oh, yeah, it did. It just got buried. Product key does not exist, which is wonderful English. Now, something else we can do in this program is we can go to all user modules, string references. And the reason we do this is because once we're at this point, all of our strings are going to be collapsed in memory. So, and now, uh, of course, the cheat launches. And as far as I can tell, looks pretty much like we'd expect. I, of course, I have no way of telling you if the cheat works, but there's no indication of any malicious functionality. We can also see some indications of how this was made using DRIMGUI, which is a C++ uh, graphical library that's fairly popular, which also tells us that this application is written in C++, not that that was of huge interest. And we can see here's this registry check that, as far as I can, I haven't seen any obvious results from flipping it. Uh, here's the actual settings for the window. Okay, so what if we really wanted one of the, to know what these commands are? Let's say we didn't have the other method. Well, one way we could go about doing that is we could attempt through x64dbg to set a breakpoint when the actual system is called from this DLL. API MS win CRT runtime system. So we go back to our VM and we go back to x64 dbg and we can find, we can potentially do that. Okay, so I had a bit of trouble with x64 dbg, so I just ended up using binary ninja so that we could keep our uh, decompilation. And here we go. So as we can see, this is in fact what we thought it was. It is being, it, it does, if we set a breakpoint, at that exact level, uh, we do get it. You can also, uh, just random thing for debugging, uh, you can make your life a lot easier if you're on Windows. If you go to exploit, don't do not do this like not on a VM, but if you're just using a VM for real engineering, uh, you can make your life quite a bit easier by getting rid of all of these ASLR settings, like this one, for example, uh, this would be on by default, and this one would be on if we hadn't already killed this. This is useful for security because it stops uh, third-party apps from doing what we're trying to do. But if you simply want to reverse engineer software, this is how you do it. So we've now confirmed, I can now kill the debugging session because we don't need it anymore. Well, since my VM is running slow, I'm just going to show it on my uh, Linux where I have it all done. So this is the function system command that we put the breakpoint on. And as we could see, uh, what was in the register, the task kill command. So that is in fact how this program works. So by patching these out, we could, we could get rid of it. But because of that as well, we can see every, we know that this is only being called on these. So when the activation request is sent, when the key is checked, so this is actually called several times throughout the program, but not again. So it does in fact seem that this is just a very poorly designed a DRM tamper protection rather than anything malicious. So to answer the viewer's question, I would not recommend running this, especially because I was thinking about this. Uh, the, the amount of anti-debugging this thing has and that it doesn't target real debuggers, which is what any cheat developer obviously is going to know how a de debugger works. So it's weird. I don't know. It might be a scam, but it doesn't seem to have built-in malicious functions, at least not in this version. 
Uh, this is a weird and, in my opinion, terrible DRM system that is going to trigger every antivirus sandbox while also not being remotely effective against cracking. And every single uh, antivirus on VirusTotal is also dead on convinced. Yeah, here we can see that from that sandbox it gets a score of 18 out of 10. So brilliant work to the developer of this at uh, achieving quite possibly the most detections I have ever seen for what doesn't appear to be malicious, but I, I wouldn't use it anyways. That's all for now. Bye!